-hmm. ever catch yourself talking to yourself mm -hmm. like not full-on conversations or anything but maybe just like thinking out loud mm -hmm. or you're trying to work through something you're kind of muttering to yourself or even just giving yourself a little pep talk you know it might seem a little strange but it's actually way more common than you might think yeah and today we're going to do a deep dive into like the hows and whys of this um often misunderstood behavior yeah and and what's so interesting about this is that um talking to yourself especially for people uh, on the autism spectrum, it can actually be a form of stimming, which that word in itself can, you know, bring up some things for folks. Yeah, for sure. Let's unpack stimming a little bit because right. the article starts out by explaining what it actually means because it's not always what we think, right? Right. Yeah. Stimming is um, basically any repetitive movement or sound or behavior that um, that helps individuals self-regulate or deal with sensory input or express their emotions. And, and it's not just for, you know, people on the autism spectrum. There's a lot of people that uh, stim in different ways um, and might not even realize it. Totally. Like when you're nervous and you're tapping your foot or like, you know, when you get really focused and you start like playing with your hair or something. Exactly. Those are those are common examples. And the article even explains how these behaviors, including talking to yourself, serve really important functions, especially when it comes to managing something called sensory overload, which is something that's often associated with autism. So, you know, imagine being bombarded by all this sensory information like sights and sounds and smells, yeah. but like at a way higher intensity than what most people experience. Yeah, I can see how that would be completely overwhelming it can be incredibly overwhelming even even to the point of being painful so stimming in this case talking to yourself can act as a way to like kind of create a sense of control or order within all that chaos like you're creating your own little internal rhythm or narrative that helps kind of filter and process everything that's going on around you yeah that makes a lot of sense like using your voice to sort of create your own little world of focus and the article also talks about how this can be really common, even for folks who, you know, maybe don't stim in a way that's as, um, I don't know, outwardly obvious. Like it, it gives the example of someone just like talking themselves through, you know, a tough decision. Right. It, it brings up how self-talk can be like this really powerful tool for problem solving. Like just the act of saying our thoughts out loud can really bring a lot of clarity and structure to that internal monologue that we all have going on. And then that helps us kind of weigh our options and come up with a solution. I mean, think about it. We always tell kids, use your words, right, to express themselves, to like work through whatever it is they're dealing with. So talking to yourself is really in a way kind of an extension of that. It's just this internal dialogue that we have to like regulate our emotions, process information, you know, navigate tricky situations. Totally. Like, it, it reminds me of that one study that the article mentions mm -hmm. uh, where they had people trying to solve these complex puzzles and uh, the people who were talking themselves through it, even if they were just like muttering under their breath, mm -hmm. they actually performed way better than the ones who were totally silent. Exactly. And that actually ties into um, this concept in psychology called the production effect, which is basically the idea that when we say information out loud, even if we're just saying it to ourselves, it actually strengthens our memory and um, our cognitive processing. Yeah, it's like we're kind of hardwired to use our words to figure things out. But, you know, it's interesting. The article also talks about, like, the social side of talking to yourself. It's like there's this weird stigma around it, you know. <laughs> Even though it's so common, it's like this unspoken rule that you're not really supposed to do it in public. Yeah, totally. And the article, uh, it even mentions how tough that can be, especially for people on the autism spectrum who might, you know, rely on this kind of stimming more openly because like we're so used to thinking of talking as part of this back and forth. So when someone's talking and there's like nobody there, it's easy to kind of, I don't know, jump to conclusions, right? Right. Like you see someone talking to themselves and you automatically think like, oh, are they okay? Or worse, like the article says, people just assume that something's wrong. Yeah. And, and that's where like the whole understanding piece comes in, right? The article really wants us to like rethink the way we see this, to stop thinking of stuff like self-talk as like a problem to be fixed and more about appreciating like all the different ways our brains work. It's like that one line in the article. It's something about how saying something is different actually says more about the person saying it than the person they're talking about. Yeah, for sure. And that's at the core of this whole thing, right? Like oh. building empathy, understanding, not just for people on the spectrum, but for anyone who expresses themselves in a way that's maybe not like the norm. I mean, you really think about it. 
that's a lot of us. Yeah. Right. Like the article that even talks about how different cultures view this whole talking to yourself thing. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. It mentions how in some cultures talking to yourself, even in public, it's totally normal. Like some even see it as a sign of intelligence or thoughtfulness. It's really interesting how that shapes what we think is normal just based on where we grew up. It makes you wonder if like all of our attempts to like suppress those impulses, whether it's stimming or self-talk, maybe that's actually doing us a disservice. Yeah. Like maybe we're missing out on connecting with ourselves or something. Totally. Like imagine if we all felt comfortable enough to just be ourselves, you know, no judgment, no stigma. Who knows what we could accomplish if everyone felt comfortable expressing themselves, however felt natural. It's like the article saying, what if instead of seeing self-talk as something we should hide, we thought of it as a tool, like a, a way to be more self-aware, regulate our emotions, you know. Totally. It's about understanding and accepting, not trying to fix people. And, you know, maybe, just maybe, if we can start to normalize these kinds of behaviors, we can actually create a better world for everyone, one where everyone feels seen and accepted for who they are. Yeah. Yeah, it's really making me rethink, like, not just self-talk, but like all kinds of stimming and how we view those things. Yeah, like what even is normal, right? It's about understanding all the different ways people process information and like just exist in the world, you know? Totally. And I thought it was really interesting how the article talked about stimming not as something to get rid of, but as something that like we can learn from and maybe even use to like help ourselves. For sure. Like we were saying, it's about creating environments where people feel comfortable and supported so they can use these natural coping mechanisms, you know? not feel like they have to hide. Totally. Like, it's not a weakness or anything. It's just, like, another way of being you. And maybe even, like, a strength in a way. Right. Exactly. And maybe if we can, like, start to really get that, then, well, then we can create a much more inclusive, supportive world like for everybody. 100%. So, yeah, I guess next time we see someone talking to themselves, maybe they're just, like, super focused or they're, you know, tapping into some creative energy or something. Yeah. It's like all those things that make us different are also what make us human, right? So, like, let's celebrate that. This has been awesome. Really yeah. makes you think. So what about you listening? Have you ever found yourself, you know, talking to yourself to deal with stress maybe? Sorry. Or just to, like, make sense of things? We want to hear about it. Hit us up on social media and let us know. And until next time, keep those brains working and keep on diving deep.